So today I'm on a uh, stream in the Tallapoosa Basin uh, that has a good population of Tallapoosa bass on it. Here I am at a something that is a sadly all too common sight around our streams and rivers. The cow field that runs up against the stream here and this is an area where the cows access the stream for water, cool off, all that kind of thing. And you can see they have totally destroyed the vegetation, broken down the bank, and created literally a slide that every time it rains, the uh, sediment pours into the creek. And you can see that you've got quite a beach in the creek right out in front of this thing. Now, in the west, this is a real problem for trout fisheries. And a lot of research has shown that this is detrimental to trout populations. What we don't have any idea of is, is this detrimental to native black bass populations? I mean, it doesn't look pretty, that's for sure, but, but does it really hurt the populations of fish? I mean, this stream has a tremendous population of Tallapoosa bass in it. You know, there's a big difference between trout and bass right off the bat in, in terms of reproduction. And the trout lay their eggs in gravel and leave them and defend for themselves. And bass obviously are nest garters and they fan the eggs and keep the sediment out of, out of the eggs. So there's an inherent difference in what you would expect sedimentation to do between trout and bass. But there's another thing that, that sedimentation does and it will smother aquatic insects and destroy habitat for things like crayfish and aquatic insect larvae that is the base of the food chain. So there certainly is still a pathway where it could be harmful to these black bass. We just don't know. This is harks back to a video I shot a few weeks ago, uh, a few months ago I think actually, uh, about the changing paradigms in black bass management and, and things we never had to worry about before. And you know, this falls under that category. Nobody cares if there are cows in the stream of a largemouth bass fishery, even smallmouth bass. The bass do just fine. We never really ever thought about this. Largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, they can live in pond, uh, lakes and ponds and rivers and streams and reservoirs. Uh, but red-eye bass, shoal bass, swanee bass, Guadalupe bass, they only live in rivers. And so you have to wonder that are these bass much more sensitive to this kind of habitat degradation than the traditional bass that we have worked on for many, many decades. We don't know, but just the very fact that we're thinking about these things now illustrates the the real change in black bass management and conservation has occurred over the last two decades. 